as technology has developed over the past decade, so has the energy sources needed to power them. Currently, we have solar energy, wind energy, oil, biomass, fossil fuel, coal, and so much more. But what if I told you there's a source of energy that could produce the same amount of power as the sun, but if not handled properly, could destroy all natural life as we know it? Whoa, 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 whoa. Not that type of energy. To find out more, watch this video. Hi everyone, I'm MJ Sangre, your average engineer. Now, we live in a world where technology is developing at a faster rate than ever. Medicines are being made within months, let alone days. And information is being constantly shared in any type of social media platform. However, we are still dealing with major problems, and one of these problems is energy. Not many people have it, and it's needed in almost everything. It's needed to power the device you're using to watch this video. It's needed to power factories, hospitals, and even your cars. And when the Industrial Revolution began, many of the industrial machines were actually powered by fossil fuels, coal, oil, and natural gases. Now, while these were good resources at the time, they were finite and over the years they have caused pollution. So engineers, scientists, researchers have been looking for different types of sources over the years and this led them to solar energy, wind energy, hydropower and so on. However, there is a downside to many of these energy sources. Most of the machines needed to convert these energy sources into electricity require a lot of maintenance and they produce a low energy density. But there is an energy source that has been around for almost six decades and with the advancement in technology, it's able to provide reliable and almost carbon free energy in some countries. And on the 13th of December, there was a breakthrough that was made with the technology used to create this type of energy source. And I'm talking about nuclear technology. When it comes to nuclear energy, there are two types. There's nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. And the difference is, nuclear fission is a subdivision of two heavy atomic nucleus, such as uranium or plutonium, into two fragments of roughly the same mass. This is used in nuclear power plants to produce electricity. And then there's nuclear fusion. Well, this is a type of nuclear reaction in which two atomic nuclei combine to form a heavier one. This process releases a lot of energy and can be generated into electricity which can power your homes, offices, buildings and so much more. And nuclear fusion is the topic of this video. Nuclear energy is not new and it has been available for over the past six decades, but it does have its shortcomings and one of them is cost. They're not easy to build, and they take many years of planning before construction is even done. Let's not forget that component materials can become highly radioactive during operation, and this could have environmental impacts. Since the late 1950s and the early 1960s, fusion reactors, these are the machines used in nuclear fusion, have had one common goal, create as hot and dense a plasma as possible and then confine that material long enough that the nuclei within it could reach ignition. The trouble is plasma is unruly. It is electrically charged which means it responds to magnetic fields and it generates its own as it moves. Also, in order for it to support fusion, it has to reach staggering temperatures. However, over a month ago, the US National Ignition Facility had a breakthrough in what is known as nuclear ignition. This is a type of nuclear energy that produces a state of matter that can readily sustain nuclear fusion. They did this by firing 192 laser beams to the fusion target in a pulse that carries 1.8 million joules of energy. The outer part of the target is a tiny metal the size of a pencil eraser called a hora. At the center of it sits a plastic sphere the size of a peppercorn containing the frozen fuel cell. This fuel is the mixture of the hydrogen isotopes deuterium and tritium, also known as DT. 
The ultraviolet beams are fired into the horror through holes at each end, but they are not directly aimed at the fuel capsule. Instead, they hit the inner walls of the horror, heating it so much that it begins to emit a pulse of x-rays. The x-rays cause the plastic to explode, driving the fuel inward towards its center. To improve the accuracy, researchers have been experimenting with the shape of the laser beam to make it deliver more power at the beginning. Now you may be wondering, why is nuclear fusion important? And why haven't I subscribed to this channel yet? Well, to answer the second one first, you just have to click the subscribe button. And that's it. Besides, a subscribe would make my day nuclear. But to answer the first one, well, there are many reasons why, and I'll give you a few of it. And the first one is, it is self-sustaining. The energy released by the fused atoms supplies the necessary energy needed to fuse additionally available atoms. This creates a chain reaction, kind of similar to what the sun does. And considering that it's so sustaining, it means that it can last for years, giving us a large supply of electricity. The second reason is related to safety. Large-scale nuclear accidents are not possible with fusion reactors. The needed fuel is very small, and as the reaction process is very difficult to start and keep going, there is no risk of a runaway reaction which can cause a meltdown. The third reason is that it has less radioactive waste than nuclear fission. The level of radioactivity depends on the structural materials used, and research is being done to find suitable materials that can minimize decay as much as possible. And the last reason is that there are no carbon emissions. The byproducts of these fusion reactors is helium. This is an inert gas which can be used safely and does not harm the environment. Now, this may be a breakthrough, but we're still far away from making it fully operational. Variables such as temperature, density, and confinement time are one of the conditions needed to make this fully stable. And as technology continues to develop, we could see nuclear fusion reactors becoming a huge reality. With ignition now achieved, not only has fusion energy been unlocked, but also a door has been opened to new science. Comments by Professor Gianluca Gregory, fellow of the Lady Margaret Hall. This shows us that the technology needed will eventually be made, and if possible, it could be done sooner than we realize. The need to find sustainable energy solutions has found researchers going up and down for solutions, and many companies are joining this battle to help reduce pollution and possibly save the planet. Over the six decades, we have seen many failures in nuclear fusion reaction. But the way you learn anything is that something fails, and then you figure out how not to have it fail again. I hope this video was helpful, and it helped you understand how nuclear technology has developed over the past years, and what and why it is important too. Thanks for watching, and if you liked this video, please hit the like button. If you want to watch more of my videos and stay up to date with my content, hit the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments what you think of nuclear technology and I hope to see you soon. Have a great day. God bless you.